this one, my wife is talking about change. Just want to share a simple word that God gave me about change. <clears throat> and the season that we, I'm not sure, maybe you can take along. But everyone was saying it's a, it's, a, it's a new season, it's a new season. And then I said, God, I, I can't say it's a new season because I don't know what. You see, if you say it's a new season, you must know what is the new season. It's not a new season because it's after COVID. We might be in lockdown again in the coming year. But seasons of God are not determined by men. They are determined by God. Are you, are you hearing me? So don't just take this house. Don't take a word that you heard on TV that's a new season. Then you come here, this is a new season. No. Where did you hear the new season from? You must go with the climatic condition of where you are planted. I, I, I can do without an amen so this morning. Because you, you, you must understand that people in UK are in a different weather than people in South Africa. People in Australia are facing a completely different... I was talking to somebody yesterday. It's very cold. So seasons depend on where you are planted. <laughs> I'm preaching right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Because sometimes the problem that we have in church, you send, you're, 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 you're in summer and somebody comes wearing a winter coat. And then you can just say that this one is not with us. Or something is wrong with this one. Because we are in our summer and you come with your your, 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 your head, your scarves and your long coat and you say, this one is going to die here. Because we're experiencing our summer. He's experiencing his winter. So it's very important that you what is the climatic condition of the house. As, as, as your weather reporter comes and tells you that in this house you are healed. In this house you are prosperous. Receive the condition that you are being given in the house and walk in it. Amen. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. You see, some of us are not able to receive the fullness of the grace that God has endured within the set men of this house because you're not listening to the voice. You say, no, but I've not received my breakthrough, but God has planted you in a house. Your breakthrough is linked to that house. You see, it was not Jesus who prayed for John's disciples. It was John. Timothy was under Paul, not under, under Barnabas. Yeah. It was king, what's the king with leprosy? N Naman. You know who gave Naman his breakthrough? It was a seventh gate in his house. <laughs> it's, impo it's important, do you know? It's important where you are planted. It is the seventh gate that says, I know of a servant of God. That your condition is not permanent. Yeah. What's the name of this church? It's like, in front, is this the same church that I came with last time when I came here? <laughs> is this the same people? <laughs> hey, I'm playing this, just I'm up here, number two. <laughs> so I want to say this morning before we talk about what we need to talk about that. Elisha and Elijah. Jesus says, he talks about the spirit of Elijah. Not of Elisha. He talks about the spirit of who? What's the spirit of Elijah in short? When Elisha said to Elijah, give me double of what you have. He says, it's beyond me. But when you see me, what? When you see me, what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> When you see me ascend, you will receive what you ask for. Most of the time, people don't receive because they don't see. Okay, let me, let me narrow it down. Some of you don't receive because you're looking at the wrong person. Who is your Elijah? 
You can't, you, can't, you can't want to receive double. Double from who? You can only receive double to whom you are following. You can only receive double from your Elijah. So there is a spirit of Elijah. This, this season, God said to me, not I'm sharing my phones, God said to us, you are entering into a new season where I'm tearing the old and you are walking in the spirit of Elijah. So it causes me to study what is the spirit of Elijah? It is the spirit of father, son, one skin. Where we are not building by membership. I know some of you are members here. That season was the old season. We are no longer building according to membership. We are building according to family. Our God is a family man. That's why he says he sent his son. Not his angels. He's got thousands upon thousands upon thousands of mighty and strong angels. But he's not building upon servants. <laughs> he's building upon sonship. For this thing to continue, for city tabernacle of all nations to continue, it can only continue through the sons of this house. Many things are failing because there is no inheritance. Or there is no, there are no people to take the inheritance and run with the inheritance. You see, when a father is of age and it has come, it, the time has come for him to, to, to be elevated to, 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 to heaven, you find that many, many of times there is no one to run with the vision. That's why many institutions are failing because there is no sonship. How many buildings did you see around that have been sold that we once called churches? You see, the government can close these houses, but does that mean the church is closed? See, God started to say, God started to the working Do you know that Jesus did not have a church? A building. He was building through sonship. Some people say, but Jesus is not a father. Go to Isaiah. Some of the names that are given to him, mighty counselor, everlasting father, the comforter. He was fathering those so that whatever was in him is not, is not going to be taken back to heaven. But it remains so that there is continuation of the kingdom of God. Amen. Church is my cross. <laughs> Building my cross. Government can do whatever they want, but the church of God. The church of God is multiplying. In, in, in secrets, in the obscurity, the church is growing. It will, listen, he says, I'm building my church and the gates of Hades will never prevail. It doesn't matter where we are. It might be an underground. There are churches in China. In China, there is no church for your own information. They are called underground churches. So this thing is not new. That's where we are going in the future. Where we build houses with underground. Are you ready for the next move of God? Where you dress like you're going to the funeral, but you know you're going to the church. But that, that will be only the spirit of sonship. When you know Elijah, if you say, stay here, I'm going to Jericho. He says, I'm not staying here. I'm following you to Jericho. He says, no, stay here. He says, I'm not staying here. It's a spirit where you know where your grace is. <laughs> and you follow. Hallelujah. So that's the season that God was talking to us about. That when you're building, this is how you're building. I know some are watching online, but I must say this. Not to discourage those that already God has been speaking to. We close our church in March. Month in March. Yeah. This is what? October. We've never been to church. We've been closed ever since. We were still closed. The reason being, we don't have a place to worship. But we, we have church. And we are talking yesterday, yesterday with my wife, that actually we have seen that during this time of church closing, the finances are going up. New people are starting to tithe. But we are not in church. <laughs> people are discovering grace. People, we didn't, we, don't, we just go online and preach online. We don't talk much. 
people are discovered that hey, this month I must take. My wife was telling me that the finances are going, the graph is going up. So what, what, you know, I will not go into details, but simply I'm learning new, I'm in a new season with God. God gave us, we, we, we declared 2020 as a year of uh, 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 possessing the gate. So we are, gonna, we, are, we, we are fasting the first week of every month we are fasting. In August, it was our last fast. Eh? And God says, no, come into rest. And I, I struggled and I went to daily because, you know, God says the whole year, God says, if God says rest, rest. So we entered into rest, we never prayed. Because now I'm not, you, I'm used to do things on my own strength. And when we do things, we say, no, after that fasting, I saw the hand of the Lord. The Lord was moving so powerfully so. After that prayer, that online prayer, the, as if God cannot move without those things. It's difficult to rest in God. Let me, if there's one of the things that is very difficult is to enter into the rest of God. You can only enter by faith. I'm, I'm, I'm channeling my message now. You, you cannot go to, you, you cannot enter the rest of God through your own strength. You can enter the rest of God through faith. I'm, I'm gonna connect it. So, we, 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 we did not pray. We did not do all what we do. We did not, we are not doing, for, for two months now, we are not doing all those things for three months that we normally do. And Bafunze is difficult. God said the rest. So I've entered into a season of declaration. If there's something that it needs my attention, I stand up and I take the weight and I declare. Ask my wife what has been happening. No, 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 no labor, no sweat. God wants you to come into a higher level of authority and power. It says, you shall decree a thing. You shall decree. Not God. God now wants you to come into a place where you speak it forth and it becomes. He is now giving you the power to determine your own condition. It's very difficult because we used to depend upon him. Now he says, no, now I'm giving you the responsibility. You speak it out. So now you can have anything that you want, but do you believe it? Hebrews chapter 6. I'm coming to my story of Luke chapter 19. I think my Bible was Luke 19. But I want to say something. There's something that is there's something that is uh, elementary that you need to understand this morning. It formulates part of the elementary doctrines. Every believer I believe should have gone through these elements in Hebrews chapter 6 the Bible reads therefore let us leave the elementary doctrine of Christ and go on to maturity not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works so number one we should not do what this is, number one is what is repentance from what Repentance from dead works. Number two, and faith towards God. You write them. Number one, repentance from dead works. Number two, faith towards God. And instruction about washing. The other vision says instruction about baptisms. So number three, you write baptisms with the S. Instructions about washings, the laying on of hands. Number that's number what now. Number four, laying on of hands. Number five, resurrection of the dead. Number six, eternal judgment. And this will have once and this we will have once being enlightened who have tested the heavenly gift. And the end have shared in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right. Today I'm not going to go into the elementary foundations and elementary doctrines. I want to just take one of them, which is number two, which is faith towards God. Faith. 
faith is to believe is belief somebody say amen. amen so which means before you believed you believed hello amen. so some of us were taken from our ancestral traditional ways of doing things we were believing but our belief was not toward God our belief was toward our ancestors so which means there are things that we do that appease the spirit of our ancestors when a child is born there's an altar in your house when you are getting married you also go and bow down to that altar when somebody is dead you also consult that altar when there's something important or things are not going on well in your life you also consult that altar so in every household, or in, yes, I'll explain the difference between household and family. See, household, I'll use myself, I'm from the Piri household, which means in Piri household, there are many families. There's Evans family, there's Foster's family, Niger's family, we are many. But when, when household is Piri, the guy who named who, who gave us his surname is our forefather, our ancestor. So when we believe in him, we must appease him. That's why you hear those who have surnames, how oh, what what you, you 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 call all those things. You are those, those are totems and synonyms of that person. And some of them go on and they you know how they are. And some of them are not even godly at all. Because of the altar. When you do contrary to that belief, you be cursed. When you want to get married in your own way, without the ancestral way, the family will renounce you. When you want to do things or get something without appeasing, when you buy a car, it must be dedicated in a way to the ancestors or give praise and slaughter a god and spill the blood to them the ancestors it was a belief system now that we believe hebrews chapter 6 a foundation has been laid how is it being laid number one repentance from dead works you can't be born again without repenting your citizen status must change. How does it change? By repenting. Repenting means you are going that way. And now you turn. You are going the other way. You can't repent and continue going the same way. The word maybe that I'm bringing this morning might be heavy. But we are talking about faith. Sometimes we find that things are not working. Because there are elements within our repentance or our faith that we did not adhere to. So it says repentance from dead works. We can list, I'm not talking about elementary. If I was talking about elementary, I do that in our discipleship school. I list all the dead works and they list them. What we used to do and what we used to believe, all these are dead works. We, re we repent from every one of them. So that when you're born again, you don't say that, hey, you know, all those things that we used to believe. Who are you? Whose altar are you bowing down to? So when you say faith, when you go now number one, when you go to number two, and you, you after repentance from dead works, your faith now must be towards God. Your faith, before you go get into water, sometimes we are quickly to baptize people before they understand simple discipleship things like this. Before you are baptized, you must understand that there is no turning back. That the, the water represents the death that you are dying with Christ. You are coming into a place of death and you are resurrecting him. And now you are seated at the heavenly places where you legislate and rule with Christ. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. 
Faith towards God. Tell your neighbor, faith towards God. What is faith towards God? Which means, whatever, if you believed in the Son, if you believed in Hare Krishna, if you believed in the stars and the moon like Abraham, if you believed in the ancestors like 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 so if you believed whatever you believe it means now it must be a time to turn around and have your faith towards god Amen. hallelujah Amen. so which means now when you when god blesses you with a car you don't buy board and when somebody engages you, it's not the time to go and kill a goat and take the blood and offer the blood. You, people say, but now we don't do that. What is bubende? Those who know what I'm talking about. You know bubende? Their blood, when you kill a goat, they take the blood, they boil it. And when you come in, the in-laws and those laws, you sit down and eat it. What do you think is that? It's cutting off the covenant. It's a blood covenant. I think that you, 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 you just do it. You don't know the, the, the altars. And now you come in, you say you're in Christ. Three years, no child. Four years, no child. Yes, your legs are spread within two altars. No, no God is responding to you because they can't hear you. You are divided because you have no God. You have no altar. That is specifically yours. One moment... You want Amadros, one moment you want God. The Bible says a double-minded man is an unstable man in all his ways. And you will receive nothing from the Lord. Amen. Why are we receive nothing? It is because we are double-minded. Saints, it's not easy to believe God. Eh? It's not easy. I can stand here and preach this sermon. It's easy. You can write notes. To live what I'm preaching is a different issue. Amen. I remember with my wife, many, many years ago, we had our second child. And they brought us those things to put the child, the Anabelas and the, the Eskom stuff, and the <laughs> <laughs> to put on the child. I said, no, I'm not going to put my children this. I said, no, now I'm in Christ. <laughs> My mother was like, oh, no, yeah. <laughs> you know, it always perfectly changes. I said, no, it's not my wife. I'm now a child of God. My child has been prayed for a church. I've taken my child for baby dedication. My pastor had laid hands and they released a wave upon my child. I will not bow down anymore to the traditions of my ancestors. Because now my faith is towards God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You, want to, you want to get married? Then choose an altar. Stick to that altar. You want a breakthrough in your life? Choose an altar. Stick to that altar. Amen. You can't have it both ways. Yeah. You can't because I'm talking to somebody. Hey, my own is snuff like I'm thinking to this snuff. But you are sinning. We are leading us into the worship now. Yeah. We are entering into realms now because into sins they must come back. Of no good to snuff. You see, I'm not going to be able to do my own sins. There's a mouth pillar. Go and go with your show. The mouth show about land and two names. You have no rest, Mam Tom Yam. Oh, for an hour, two and a by singing. Oh, I'm not next. But I said, I'm so very much to say to me. But I'm so very much to say to me. When you have to go straight. And as to what changes when you die. You want a house for a man who died without his own house. He went in a marriage from a man who was also struggling on his own things. Are you, are you with me this morning? Yes. So when we come to Christ, we forsake all. Yes. 
We forsake all. Our faith now is towards God. You pray, you, you pray in that altar, my sister. You pray in that altar, my brother. You cry out before God. You call the names of God. You declare the word of the Lord. You stand in faith. You fast. You pray. You see your way through. You do everything necessary to make sure that no weapon formed against you shall prosper in any way in the mighty name of Jesus. You, take, you don't take no for an answer. You believe till you die. Anna, Anna, I want to take you to Luke chapter 19. This awesome presence fill this place for this is holy ground. So come ever consuming fire, consuming fire. Consume fire, sweet pain. Oh, yes, Jesus is awesome. Jesus, feel this place. Oh, yes, for this sees all the ground. The presence of the Lord is here. So come and oh, consuming fire, consuming fire, sweet pain. His awesome presence, awesome presence. Whose life has been stagnant for quite some time. 
But this morning, as you choose to turn your faith towards God, God says, I'll, I'll remove those chains. So I'll take those shackles away from your feet. There's deliverance. There's a spirit of deliverance in this house this morning. God says, you are going out a different person from this place. Yes. Consume me, fire, sweet perfume, is awesome presence. There's a call this morning to come to the altar. The Lord says that the only altar that you're going to bow to is my altar. This is the season and time to choose God. Many things have been happening in your life, but God says it is because you were divided in your approach. He says, my altar is the only altar. And he says this morning that Calvary will never be in vain. The blood that I spilled in Calvary supersedes all sacrifices. Amen. So there is no need for you to spill the blood. Whether it's the blood of chickens, whether it's the blood of goats, whether it's the blood of cows, there is no need anymore because the sacrifice has been received. Amen. So come and bow down to the altar of God. It's almost, if I was in Mozambique today, I would be burning a lot of things after the service. Because it's services like these where people come, says, I've got stuff in my house. Says, go and take them, bring them here. We take all those Zionist uniforms, those things, those garments, we plates, those ancestral plates, those clothes, they bring them into the altar. We go and buy petrol. After the church, we take them outside, we burn them, and we celebrate one altar. People are serious with God outside, Pastor God. God is erecting an altar. And that's one altar. Where was I, God? Luke 19. Right, it just messes up my <laughs> just messes up my sermon. Hallelujah. And Jesus entered, I'm reading from this one. And Jesus entered through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. Two things that you must know about Zacchaeus that he was a chief among the publicans, and that he was. Why is your rich muffled? Two things about Zacchaeus. Number one, he was a chief. And number two, rich. So I want you to know that Zacchaeus was what? Rich. Say rich. Do you have a problem with riches? So why is he rich? rich? Don't you want to be rich? Don't you want to be rich? So say rich. Say Zacchaeus was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. Let's, let's, let's use quite a, a friendly, a friendlier version. Jesus entered Jericho, Jericho and passing through it, a man, a man named Zacchaeus appeared. He was a leading tax collector and rich one at that. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he couldn't do so due to the crowd since he was a short man. Another thing about Zacchaeus is he was what? He was a short man. So because of the crowds that were surrounding Jesus, Zacchaeus was not able to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's not because we cannot reach to the Lord. 
it is because we are surrounded by tall people that in that that makes us it makes it impossible for you to see your breakthrough that makes it difficult for you to see jesus some of us our our friends our people that we we, we are surrounded with they are taller than us I'm talking, it's a spiritual concept. If you, if you don't get it, then your pastor must explain it to you. Make sure your circles are of same height. Because sometimes things that you are supposed to see clearly, you won't see them clearly because of obscurity. You are obscured. You are standing in obscurity because of those that are around you. Obscurity doesn't mean always that you have done something wrong. It is sometimes caused by those who are around you. You might be walking all right, but because you are in a cycle, and they can cause obscurity. And Zacchaeus was short in stature and could not see who Jesus was. This man was relentless. Right, number four. So he ran ahead. He left the cycle. <laughs> he left the cycle. He ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus. So he knew that if, I, if, I, if I'm always with these guys, I will not see my Lord. I'm a, how do I go up? You see, sometimes for you to receive your breakthrough, you must leave the cycle that you grow up with. You must, you must step higher. You must find something to step up so that you are able to be elevated above those that are around you. Some of the times, you, you are not able to go to your second level. You are not able to go to your second dimension because you, 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 Most of us are waking home now. Uh, say, I came to your work the other day. I saw that there are stairs going to your offices. How many steps are there to your office? A rough estimate. Oh, per, per, per level, how many steps are there? 15 plus 15, 30. How many floors is your office? 30 times 2. 60 steps to my office. You can write a book, 60 steps to my office. But somebody in third floor is 90. But remember, there's somebody in the ground floor that doesn't need a step to anything. Or maybe their, their steps is just, just going there and taking something. But you want the second floor, you have to go how many levels? Two levels. But in levels, there are steps. Let me break that down. There are steps to prosperity and levels. <laughs> My friends, the Bible says, the scripture that I read you, repentance from dead works, those are steps of repentance. You must renounce them. What is a level then? If steps is all this, then there's a lift that you go into and press two. And it goes and then without taking steps. That is for another day. But today I want you to understand that there's a season in your life that you must climb one step at a time to reach your first, second, third, fourth level. Sometimes you pass people standing on the steps because they are tired. And they will tell you, I'll figure it out. Continue going. Continue going. Continue going. Not. You know, it will take you the same amount of steps to go up. So the devil always wants to convince you to go back. But it will take you the same amount of time to go back. So instead of using that energy to go down, you can use that energy to Amen. 
He says it's on level two. But each level has 30 what? But do you know something? When you master steps, when you are used to climb steps, when you're going up, you are able to take four steps with one step. Have you seen those people when you're going to step? They go, they, they, they hit two, three steps. And they pass you on. He's used. It becomes now simple. There are things that when you start, they are hard. But when you get used, when the lift is not working at work, have you seen those who, who, who normally wants to abscond steps? <laughs> that they need a break. <laughs> and they, sometimes they need oxygen to, to do. So, Zacchaeus, what is his name? Zacchaeus was tired of the level that he was. And he decided, I'm taking steps towards seeing Jesus. He risked his life and started to climb. Not down. He started to climb up. I'm not sure how many steps did he climb to reach where he could see Jesus. He never stopped till he was in the level where he could see Jesus. You don't stop till you are at the level where you can see clear. Let me continue. When Zacchaeus came to the tree, he looked up and said, oh, sorry, when Jesus came to, to the tree, he looked up. Now, Zacchaeus, this picture gives us that now everyone, Zacchaeus is above everyone now. That even Jesus now is looking up. Because who's got a better picture here? Who's got a better clear picture? It's Zacchaeus now. Remember where he's coming from. He's coming from a place where he could not see anything. Remember where we are coming from. We are coming from that place where you could not see anything. But we can't stop there. We must continue climbing. Faith, our faith is to see God doing new things in our lives. Our faith should be towards our, our, our children, towards the generations to come that we are raising up a new altar. I mean, I'm radical, buffoons. You know my wife's name, we changed my wife's name. Any name that does not, some of you, your breakthrough lies in your name. Some of you, you are Mashahala, your name. Kidibohu. Well, you now have the right to go to Oma Face and give yourself a name that talks about your destiny and your purpose. Because sometimes some of those names, we don't know what had happened. People were fighting and they decided that. I will not say it. <laughs> Have you ever heard so, so, so many names? Mm. When I come from Zim, in Zim, we've got names. Yeah. We've got names. You guys from Venda, I think also you've got names in Venda. But you can change that if it's a limitation. Continue climbing till you see Jesus clear. Amen. And Jesus said to him, when Jesus came to the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. Now, Zacchaeus receives a breakthrough more than anyone who was around. Why? Because of his tenacity. Because of his relentless pursuit. Because he decided that I will not remain here. When, he, when Jesus got his attention, he says, the meeting is over today. Me, I'm going with this man. Jesus' faith, actually Jesus sees the faith in this man. And Jesus gets attracted. There are things, Bazalani, let me say this. There are things that we do that gets the attraction, that, that, that attracts heaven. Amen. Some, some, I didn't tell you about my, the name of my sermon. Eh? This is my sermon's name. Faith without works. Is dead. The name of my sermon, faith without works, without works is dead. In, in what I've said with Zacchaeus, I want you to go to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. I want you to read from verse the last. Let me just check where you are.
Verse 14 says, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can faith save him? I'll repeat that. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works? Can faith, can that faith save him? If a brother or a sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So, also faith by himself, if, it's, if it does not have works, it's dead. But someone would say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and they shudder. Do you want to be shown your foolish, you foolish person that your faith apart from your works is useless? Was not Abraham our forefather justified by works when he offered up his own son on the altar. You see that faith was active along with works and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteous and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works not by faith alone. And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out on the other way for as the body apart from the spirit is dead so also faith apart from the work is dead Amen. right I'm working towards my closing now let's start I need to, we are talking about elementary things we are talking of, about the steps that you need to take to be in that place where your faith is toward God Sorry, your faith is toward God. Because I had an S coming out of my mouth. So I must adjust that to a faith towards God. Because some people are good with listening. So he says God's. And they can rewind on the camera and they are behead. No, it's faith towards God. So, right. The Bible says, your faith says, I believe, I believe, I believe. The Bible says it's not enough. It says, you must put works. It says, you see Abraham believed and he's seen taking his son as a sacrifice. So what justified Abraham is not what he believed, is the works that followed after. Hello? So, in another way, it doesn't help you to say, this is your home, this is your home church, and there's no sacrifice. Oh, let me go further. It doesn't help to say, this is my church, this is my church, and your tithe is not coming here. I'll go to the books of faith. I know you want me to go to Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going there. Uh, you can go there. You can go there. Uh, verses 11. Uh, chapter 11. I think it's verse 3 or 4. Read for me. To say some people are called the heroes of faith. Not because they did anything. Just because they gave. In the New Testament you hear about a, a, a woman named Dorcas. Is it Dorcas? What's her other name? Dorcas or Lydia? The one who died. And because of her giving, the, the community said in, Abel, in Abaton, the community says, this one cannot die. Other people can die. Apostle, come and pray for this one. This one must resurrect. No. But not Dokas. Dokas cannot die now. You see all these clothes that we are wearing is this woman. When he dies, he's a Gorantin. There's a giving that provokes heaven. There's, there's faith that is not spoken, but that is evident. Yeah. You see, we, 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 the, the faith that we've been preaching was believe God for this and you're going to get this. But we've never been told that there's a faith that you just do silently, you just go into your pockets. And your pastor says, hey, that woman I respect is a woman of faith. Not because of what you said. <laughs> you see, there's faith that moves heaven. The Bible says what? In, in Hebrews chapter, verse 3. Yes, verse 3 says, 
space was created and beautifully, beautifully coordinated by the power of God's word. The other version says, by faith we believe that the heavens and the earth were created. By, so by faith, it is not by science. <laughs> the Bible says when it comes to the universe, how it was created, you need to believe by faith. You need to believe that it's God who made the stars. Because when you try to see how big one star is, you won't comprehend, your mind can comprehend it. You must believe that by, by faith the universe were created by God. Number four. Number four. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Wait. A more. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. There's a comma, I believe. Is there a comma? Yes, after came there's a comma. By faith. Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. Who has offered in faith? And then you felt everything saw. You started to bind the devil. No, I, I bind you, Satan. There is no way the devil can say give, let me tell you. So when it comes to giving and it's painful, it is because God wants you to give a more excellent sacrifice. If you have never given in faith, I want to provoke you. That for your faith to take you to a higher dimension or to a higher level, now how we jump the steps sometimes, how we jump the steps is when we take everything we have or at that season, for some people is that 1,000 and your pastor was saying that if there's a need and it's not enough, then it's a seed. Let me repeat that again. Some people didn't get it. You are believing God for a car. You are believing God for whatever. You are believing God for whatever you are believing God. And you've been serving and serving and serving and it's not enough. The Bible says if there is a need and the need is not met, then it's a what? The Bible says it is the seed that will crush the head of the serpent. So in our cycles that we come from, they are serpents. And how do we overcome serpents of poverty, serpents of sickness, serpents of all that? We have to seed our way through the serpent. It is the seed that will crush the head of the serpent. Cycles are what we, we all familiar about cycles where we come from. Hello? Amen. There are cycles in our families, some of us that the men at certain at, at this certain age they die or men at certain age they go to prison or men at this certain age they impregnate without getting married and the, in some of your cycles that you're coming from from families that you're coming from you got women that specific kind of these women they don't get married and some of us come from those families you know that oh, and all this you can name them you can see and you can see that this thing is like playing is, 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 is brushing shoulders with you. And how do we crush those serpents? Women, you, you will be familiar with this thing, that a woman goes through a cycle. And there's one thing that stops a cycle in a woman. It's a seed. The word of God is the seed that was given to us. And if there's any cycle in our life, the word of God is able to crush. Here is a man by the name of Cain, Abel. He said, he gave a more excellent, I, I'm not sure, Bafunzi, that we need to do a study. What is a more excellent sacrifice? These are two people who are working together, coming to give to, give to God. When Abel gave, his brother became sad. Hello? Have you ever given till people want to want to ask about zone? But yeah. Hey Lord, your papa, yes. Hey Papa. Fumus boy na this yes. You give till it takes people. You know, I went to another church in Bafunz. That man taught me how to give. He didn't preach. He was carrying about 200 rand rand. Wa figure who altar. Wa figure wa process that so. Ngabone slide. I counted it. 
I couldn't finish counting. I said, there are people who could hearts like this. <laughs> That's what God no, forgive us. This man just came buffoons through the, 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 the twelve runs in, in money clips. In the tent, he was jiving. I said, I bind the spirit as the spirit of Cain. I bind the spirit of Cain. I shall not slaughter my brother. Oh. <laughs> Do you know that people who give, they are hated by people who don't give? Yeah. It did not start now. It started. God intervened. He says, hey, Yamuna, why is your face like that? Why is all, <laughs> why all of a sudden your face is falling? He says, if you do good, yours will be received as well. So, Master God, when we come to God, when our faith is toward God, we, we, we must give with our hearts, not with, our, with anything. God judges the heart. You see how Zacchaeus was invited by Jesus. It is the heart that Zacchaeus had. He laid down his chieftaincy. He laid down his riches. He laid down everything. He was a tax collector, well known in the city. When Jesus was in the city, he laid all that down. And he ran like a madman to a sycamore tree. And he, I don't know, they were wearing garments those days. I'm not sure how easy it was for him to climb up that tree. You know, when we say we believe God, there must be a sense, sometimes there must be a sense of madness. Like, man, to just do things that are just normal, that eh, no about eh, wins and, that, eh, eh. but sometimes when we meet God, I'm telling you, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And the, the, the Bible says, and Abel offered to God a more sacred, a more excellent sacrifice. There's a giving that will provoke heaven. Can you finish that scripture? Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which was commended as righteous. The offering was called what? Righteous. God commenced commending him by accepting his gift. Actually, he was commended by God when God received his gift. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. You know, sometimes you buy pill. You need to Let me try to move this thing. Yeah. He's dead. But there's something that still speaks that is of Cain. He's giving. By, because he gave by what? By faith. You know, you can buy this place. And it doesn't take many people to buy this place. It needs people of faith. It needs the abelic anointing. Hello? Amen. Because if you're going to the bank, you are bringing a more excellent sacrifice. That God will commend it. You remember Jesus was going, I don't know where he was going to pray for somebody. They said, Lord, uh, that master that built us the temple is sick. Jesus says, no, we are not going to pray for that one. Then the Bible says, Jesus turned. It says he, he, he loves our people. He built us a temple. I'm not sure what scripture. You know the scripture. It's, it's an X. It's an X or in one of the books. Yes. It says, no, Lord, he built us a temple. And Jesus went to pray for the man. So there's a kind of giving that even if people were going that way, when they hear that it's you, they must give you attention because you built the temple. So faith, this morning that I want to challenge you with, is the faith of provoking the heavens. I want you to, when you go home, this series of faith, when it finishes, you must have done something that you have never done before. Because for you to go to the next level, you won't go with your same old, old mindset. 
I remember one time we were in a service like this. A minister challenged us, go and give something that you have never given. When I got home, there were no couches. <laughs> you heard what I said? I'm not a I'm in London. I'm not a TV. I'm not a salary move. I'm not a commodity villa. I'm not a yaham. It was painful. We had no couches, we had no TV. We're testing God to take our, our faith to the next level. I'm not sure what it is that when you think it's taken away, you will die. That's where your faith is. Abraham's faith was in Isaac. And God saw that, you know, as long as they Isaac, you know, Abraham is his one. But Abraham is going to for. Abraham, this one. I probably the master for night too. The Isaac and the Ishmael, the no, the iPhone and the the Huawei. <laughs> God says, I need, I need your iPhone. But this is my only phone. You know when you love something, you call it the, the only. My this is my only car. Yeah. You can have three cars, but when somebody wants that one, says, this is my. We can we can take all these other cars, please. Can take take that one. Take. But not this one. And it's most, most of the time, that's what God wants. That one. But if you don't know who has given you, you will withhold. I wanted to explain something, but looking at the time, I will not be able to do that. So I want to challenge you. But in this series of faith, How are you going to provoke God? Do something that will be a memorial. Every one of you here, I want to do something. I, I'm not going to tell you what it is. It must be one day when you come here and testify. But when Apostle was here, I gave my whole 5,000 to the ministry. And I felt like I was dying. I was you know, if you give until you think, oh, how am I going to pay school fees? How am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? How? But I've seen something. Every time we pay our first fruits and we do the right thing and we do what God has called us to do. And sometimes there is no money, but we have seen God coming more, even mightier than before. Hello? Hello? What is it this morning? What works? I'm not talking about prayer. I know you pray. I know you fast. I want your, your faith to be accompanied by works. I want you to offer something to God. Not to me, not to Mfundis. We've got nothing to do with that. If there are church bank account, can we have them on here? I'm not sure what it is, what God wants you to do by faith. Challenge God. Challenge him. For your breakthrough, challenge him. Couples, Tina, with my wife, we always say, when it comes to such issues, such issues there is no consultation. Because when you go to your wife, says, baby, I was thinking of giving the card. Ah, baby, no, 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 That's why Abraham did not tell Sarah that he is going to offer Isaac. It was not going to happen. <laughs> At all. I said, I was over my dead body. What? This child that I got, what? What are you saying? He's not going in. Come, come sit down. You're not going. Your father don't know what he drank this morning. A seed that will shake you. A sacrifice that will shake you. Can we stand on our feet? You is the worship team. Oh, sweet perfume is all. Yes. Right 
the numbers down. Whatever church, whatever ministry you belong to, whatever it is that God is commanding you to do, it is to take you to your next level. Faith is like a muscle, it grows. But you must exercise faith. You must exercise faith. Wherever you are, I want to challenge you. If it's a seed that you need to grow, if you want to sow into Shalom City Tabernacle, the city tabernacle of all nations, the bank accounts, I am. On the screen, uh, it's a check account 934884380. Check account, Absa Bank. I'll repeat the numbers again it's 934884380. That's the, the bank base Absa. And uh, if you want to sow a seed, a sacrificial seed, please do, the, do so this morning. Just want you to lift up your voice and this morning we want to just say this simple prayer together. Lift up your hands to the King of Kings. And say with me, Lord Jesus. Come and say with me, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word. And this morning I believe that you are my God that my faith leads to God my faith is toward you and only you today I move I migrate my faith only to you I declare that in you I'm safe I'm whole I'm delivered I'm healed I'm prospered and I have life. Today, teach me to believe through my works. Through my works, like Abraham believed and, and offered Isaac. Like Abel believed and offered a sacrifice. Like Jesus believed and offered himself. Today, I believe. In Jesus' name, I'm ready to bring my seed. I'm ready to bring my seed faith. I'm ready to bring my seed faith. In Jesus' name. Come and just lift up his father in the name of Jesus. 
This is indeed the holy ground. Father, many of us have been struggling to give in the kingdom of God. But Lord, we are coming today, we want to do this by faith. We want to do this in a different way. It's not something that we're going to rush to, but it's something that we're going to think and process through. And when we are ready, we will bring it to the house. So Lord, this morning, help those who are fearful that there is no fear in perfect love. Perfect love cast away all fear. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So Lord, You gave because You loved. One sign that we love is how we give. So this morning, Father, we thank You as City Tabernacle of all nations receive this faith seed. Lord, You multiply where that seed comes from. Lord, I challenge every believer in this house this morning to move by faith. Not by what we see, but by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabaka Shakataya Mandelibis. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All things are possible. declare that city, uh, city tabernacle of all nations Father will rise from faith to faith my Lord that the things that they are believing you for Lord it will be possible Lord I declare that this house is built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets I thank you Lord that is a word is being ministered in this place Almighty oh, God is bringing forth the harvest that is intended you know the work, Lord, that is required here. You know the finances that are required here. You know, my God, what is needed, Lord, the property. This place, my God, I decree and I declare, my God, that you promised to Joshua that wherever we shall trend our feet, that land you give us as we trend our feet upon this place. I, Father, I declare that it's given already to sit it up and Oh my God. Lord, it's not about finances, but it's about the vision. Oh my God. Lord, I declare this whole block, not only this place, but this whole block, my God, that it is given to them. My Lord, we pray for the owners, my God, to find them favorable. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare a new season, oh my God, of owning property to churches, oh my God, that is churches, oh my God. We still to elevate our faith to a place where we believe you for such properties, oh God. So this morning I declare and decree, oh my God, that city tapaneng will walk in a higher level, oh my God, to see you as you are. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.